Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Back in 2020, Kraft announced their second small batch one step, which followed on the heels of the very successful John Coltrane Lush Life one step. That was limited to a thousand copies and it was gone probably within an hour, if not less. This was at the at the height of the feeding frenzy with all the one steps and UHQRs and everything, everything was like, you had to get it right away. There was a lot of FOMO. And this second title, Eastern Sounds by Youssef Latif, was very highly anticipated. I remember the day that it went on sale. The way you had to ensure that you had the best chance to get one of these was to subscribe to Kraft's newsletter. That way you got a pre-sale code. So the way they set the sale up was, for subscribers, they got a pre-sale code a few hours earlier than the general sale. So that gave you a better chance of getting one. I signed up for the um, code. I had the code in hand. I was sitting at a cafe. I had to go to work at the time it was being released, 11 a.m. And I sat there with my coffee and I'm looking at the screen. I typed in my code. I got to a landing page. And at 11.01, .01, it started to change. So the, the screen changed, the order page was up and I hit order. There was an excruciating long 10 second delay. And then it went to the checkout page. The checkout page was daunting. There was so much information to fill in, the credit card number, the shipping method, your address, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh man, this is, there's no way I'm gonna get all this information in there. And I was already like, you know, nervous and everything like that. But um, then I remembered, thank God, that I had Apple Pay set up. And I looked on the payment choices and I saw Apple Pay and I just clicked it. And then I saw another rotating wheel and after, what seemed like an eternity, I got a confirmation and I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God I got this album that I'd never heard before. Yeah, it was like that. FOMO was like that. You wanted to get something just because it was so limited and it was gonna sell out. And sometimes you bought stuff without really hearing it. I think I auditioned it once and I liked it enough to, to go ahead and get this. But um, I reviewed the original uh, One Step compared to the original, original Jazz Classics series release, which was in uh, released in 91, I think, mastered by Phil Delancey. I'll leave, a re I'll leave a link for that review, but it was so early in the channel, it's kind of embarrassing to watch. Um, but in that one, I found that I preferred the one step by far to the original Jazz Classic uh, 1991 pressing. Um, it had a much sweeter, more organic sound than that pressing. I think there is some question, but I think that one may be digitally mastered. I'm not sure, but um, this one, um, this one step is AAA, all analog mastered from the original master tape on all tube equipment by Bernie Grunman, pressed on um, Neotech vinyl, so the premium vinyl formula at RTI and packaged in this gorgeous um, true cloth bound slip case with inset artwork and gold foil stamping. It also has a SA and a ribbon system to pull out the record, which is really cool. Mine was uh, number 343, a beautiful edition of this record. So, a lot of people were disappointed because they were not able to get it. They were frustrated. They didn't know if they had sold out. They tried all day and it was a mess. It was a mess. And Kraft, thankfully, for future One Steps, upped the number of pressings. And as a result, most of them are still available. So now there's like 5,000 of each or sometimes 3,000, but way more than 1,000. So. Um, a good number for this kind of uh, premium release. This originally retailed for $100. Um, 
I just looked on Discogs and you can get one for, I used one for less than 150 and they go up to about 300. So the appearance of the original jazz classic is a godsend. But how does the sound compare to the one step? Well, I'll approach this from a few different angles. So um, I'm gonna make a suggestion for someone who, who doesn't have the album at all, for someone that has the 91 edition, and for someone that already has the one step. Um, both have excellent inner jackets. As a matter of fact, on first glance, they're almost identical, but the one step is a bit shinier. This is a bit flatter um, in, in texture and it looks beautiful. Actually, I, I, I sort of prefer the new one. The new one is a little more substantial feeling as well. It looks beautiful. It's a tip on jacket. Very, very nice. It comes with the Obi like this. So like all of them, there's a little, a little uh, quote there and credits. And in the credits, it says uh, it's recorded by Rudy Van Gelder in Ingle Inglewood Cliffs in 1961. AAA lacquers cut from the original master tapes by Kevin Gray, coherent, pressed on 180 gram vinyl at RTI. So the differences you have here are um, a little more luxurious presentation for the one step and a very good presentation as well for the OJC. Uh, you have tube mastering by Bernie Grunman on one hand, and unlike what it says on the hype sticker, this is actually mastered by Matt Luthens at Coherent. So I discovered that when I was going through these and they look so close to each other, I was like, I had them both out and I said, oh no, God, oh my God, I've mixed them up. I don't know which one's got one step anymore. Well, I forgot that the one step is translucent vinyl, but uh, on first glance, they look exactly the same. The labels look the same. The jackets look pretty much the same. And I was like, uh, let me look at the dead wax and see Kevin Gray's initials. That way I'll know. Well, Kevin Gray's initials were not there. It was Matt Luthens at Coherent Audio. This is a great thing. Not because Kevin Gray can't cut a great record. He can, of course, we all know that. But Matt Luthens is a little less well known than uh, Kevin. He's an up and coming, um, although he's been working for many years in, in the mastering field. But this is a, kind of a high, high profile release for him to do. And I am so glad that he had a chance to do this. Um, so just be aware that this is not a Kevin Gray mastering. It is Matt Luthens. I've been following Matt on the Hoffman Forum for years. Um, I really liked his um, examination of the Sinatra albums that was so good. Um, I'll try to leave a link to it where he breaks down all the different pressings and the tape sources and all that. He's so, so knowledgeable and has such a good ear. So this is um, the difference in these two masterings. One's tube, one's on the coherent system, which does not have tubes. What are the differences? Well, it was pretty hard to tell at first glance. They were very, very similar. However, Bernie's tube mastering has a little more of a rounded glow to it. It's a little softer in presentation and it's very, very attractive. I loved it when I first heard it and I much preferred it to the original jazz classic from 1991. I sent that one back. I, it was just crude sounding in comparison to the one step. Um, the vinyl is super quiet on the one step, of course, but the new one, the vinyl HQ 180 vinyl is almost just as quiet. It's really not a contest. It's about the same. Um, pressing quality was excellent. RTI did an excellent job on either one of these. Um, the new one by Matt, the difference I noticed was just a little bit more shimmer in the cymbals, a little more definition throughout in the bass, and it presented it in a beautiful way as well. I could live easily with either of these, and I have to say, the original jazz classic is beautiful. Really, really well done. You're gonna be floored when you hear it. 
If you've never heard the record before, if you don't have this record, the original Jazz Classics is the ticket. It is the most obvious choice. There's no reason to go back to the 1991 pressing. Even if it is $10 cheaper, it doesn't matter. Get the original Jazz Classic, you'll be thrilled. Um, if you have the one step, um, for me, having a second copy of this is essential. Um, it's a very quiet album. The one step has gotten very expensive. And sometimes when these records get so expensive, you hesitate to play them. And that was kind of becoming the case with some of my most expensive uh, records. And this is one of them. And I was like, I would love to have a play copy that is equal in stature to the one step. And finally we do. It is a slightly different, but equally as valid and beautiful, beautiful sound. The record is so unusual. I'd never heard this type of music before. It's jazz, but it's got an Eastern flavor in many of the cuts. And that is because of the instrumentation and the arrangements, flute, oboe, and tenor sax. Um, there's also a, um, an instrument called um, the rabat that is, uh, takes the place of the bass on some tracks. And there are just little touches like uh, finger symbols and wood blocks and things like that in some of these tracks that just give it this oriental flavor that just is so attractive. It's so beautiful. The love theme from Spartacus is just a lovely tune, really done well here. The plum blossom and the three faces of Bilal um, bookcase the album with the oriental flavor in a very sparse arrangements. And the quiet vinyl is very much appreciated on all these. And you get the quiet vinyl no matter which pressing you have. Um, other tracks, some are a little bit more um, traditional in a way, but each one is unique and showcases the versatility of Yusuf Latif. I became a big fan when I got this album and even more so revisiting it this time. I can't recommend this um, album highly enough. It's wonderful, just wonderful. Matt did a knockout job on it. And I can't see anyone being disappointed with it, even if you already have the one step as an alternate version or as your play copy. This is um, a very welcome release. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this new release of Yusuf Latif's Eastern Sounds. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.